Processing Learning by Jeremy Flew Flewelling. Based on a factory model, our current system of education inadequately prepares students for the world they're entering into. However, education is shifting from this factory model to a 21st century model. From memorization of facts to skill development, from teacher-centered to student-centered, and from no talking to rich collaborative experiences. Ann Shaw expresses it this way, it addresses a rapidly changing world with new problems, as well as exciting new possibilities. One area that has facilitated this shift is an increasing knowledge of how the brain works. Dr. Patricia Wolf describes how the brain is wired for engagement. The brain is made up of four lobes, one for vision, one for hearing, one for higher level thinking, and one for touch and taste. When receiving input from the body, the cells in these lobes fire electrical impulses that connect to other areas of the brain. The more lobes we use to input information, the stronger chance you have of remembering. One strategy you could use to create lots of connections in the brain is think-pair-share. The person listening is accessing the visual lobe as they watch the other person explain, the thinking lobe as they process the information, and the auditory lobe as they listen. Another brain-based approach is tied to the two types of memory, procedural and declarative. Declarative memory is necessary for information, names, dates, lists. Procedural memory, though, is skills, routines, habits, actions. What you're trying to teach the students will determine the strategy that you use. Procedural memory takes rote repetition, doing it over and over and over again until the connections in your brain are solid. Declarative memory needs a more creative strategy that gives the information some kind of meaning. Think of all the different songs elementary teachers used to get students to remember the ABCs or the states and capitals. Now think of the lobes of the brain. The names are declarative memory. So repetition may work to memorize these, but something more creative would enable the brain to more easily remember them. Sing to the farmer in the dell. There are four lobes in the brain, four lobes in the brain, occipital, parietal, frontal, temporal. Occipital controls the sight, occipital controls the sight. You get the picture. Knowing how the brain works enables teachers to use strategies that cause students to remember more. The brain also affects how a student learns individually and socially. Lev Vygotsky developed the social development learning theory. In his theory, he expresses that students who struggle too much with the material give up easily because their brains cannot make the necessary connections. On the other hand, students who find the material too easy give up because the material is not engaging enough. Again, lack of connections. Lev proposed that there is a zone of proximal development in which the curriculum is engaging but not too difficult so that the student is overchallenged. In this zone, the struggle of the student helps to engage them but also gives them a sense that they can accomplish it. I like to think of this learning theory as the Goldilocks theory. Not too hot, not too cold, but just right. Another aspect of social development theory is social interaction. Emotion has a strong influence on learning. Nestled in the middle of the brain is the amygdala and the hippocampus. The amygdala stores emotional memories, and the hippocampus is in charge of episodic or long-term memory. When these two portions of the brain are activated, memory retention is increased. Any strategy we can integrate that involves collaboration or interaction causes the amygdala and the hippocampus to work their magic in creating memories. Constructivism, a learning theory, relies on these brain connections. Jones and Bratter Araja Arahe describe the three key ideas that make up this theory. Knowledge is not the finish line, but rather the race itself. The goal is not to fill the students with lots of information, but rather to develop in them the process necessary to gather and interpret their own information. Second, in order to learn, students link new information to prior information. In this case, the connections to the various lobes in the brain, as described earlier, become essential. And third, the responsibility for learning shifts from the teacher to the student, and learning becomes a very personal experience based on the experiences and knowledge that a student already has developed. Understanding the learner becomes essential when the learning process shifts to this more learner-centered approach. Technology also plays a role in the shift from teacher to student-centered learning. Teachers can use technology to research new strategies for teaching diverse learners. 
Technology gives students the avenue to create social change by magnifying their voice through choice of their personalized projects. It can also empower students by creating an environment in which all students can contribute ideas and information to the class. Rather than replacing the teacher, technology requires the teacher to engage in more powerful roles. In these roles, the teacher utilizes technology to facilitate individual learning. Brain-based learning, social development theory, constructivism, and the use of technology all play a role in the shift that I described at the beginning of the presentation. The shift from forcing learning on the student to learning with the student. In this new learner center environment, the teacher must create a culture in which they learn together with their students. Only then can we truly be successful in shifting our classrooms into the 21st century.